Hello there, Sarah from 17 once again. This is my splinter cell, hard difficulty video walkthrough. This is mission 7, it's the abattoir, and I've split this video up into two sections, mainly to make it a little bit shorter so it's easier to upload, but a lot of people have been curious about my video lengths, and my videos are generally as long as they need to be. It doesn't really matter if they're too long or too short, but every so often, especially when I've got quite a lot of workload, I like them to be shorter than longer, and when I say shorter, I mean between 15 minutes to 20 minutes rather than 25 to 30. And that is entirely to do with the way that videos work on YouTube. So the algorithm prioritizes certain videos, depending on what they are, and the algorithm has actually changed a few times, so it's changing how it works. But shorter videos generally do better statistically because the audience's attention span is much shorter because we live in an attention deficit disorder age not necessarily a bad thing just different i've explained this a few times so i'm not going to go over it too much but the recipe for success on youtube is always to have shorter videos however it can be exploited like any mechanic can be as i just stood up then randomly what a terrifying moment that was this level's tricky too so i'm going to be talking some strategy once we get into it but the longer videos generally suffer, because not everybody has that amount of time to invest when they're, when they're outside of doing the things they have to do. You know, a lot of people have to work crazy hours, a lot of people have a lot of family obligations, a lot of people have certain stuff that just needs to be done that takes priority over their own personal time. And when they come to a channel to, to enjoy themselves in that time, not everybody has 40 minutes to sit down and watch a video or listen to a video while they do something. And you have to be aware of this because the biggest problem with a lot of people is their perspectives and the way that they conduct themselves on the internet is inherently selfish and we're all guilty of it at times but you have to have a less narrow-minded view so when you're saying oh I hate videos this length why can't they be this length they're not just your videos dude and that is not anybody in particular it's just the collective whole you have to make something for everybody and not everybody's going to like everything it's just the way it is so to wrap it up, my videos are generally as long as they need to be. I have nothing against the bigger videos. For some reason, there seems to be this pretense that it's my internet that restricts the size of certain videos. That is not entirely true. The only times it restricts it is when I want to get something up quickly. A good example would be if a new, if Bloodborne, if I got Bloodborne two days before it came out. There's no guides on YouTube. I have the game early. I'm gonna be doing, you know, 48 hour days which doesn't even make sense, that's why it works. I'm gonna be hitting that game so hard, it's gonna make my ears bleed. And I'll be recording it, and I'll be doing all that kind of great stuff. At that moment in time, I have a very brief window of opportunity, which could then lead into success. This right here, Thermal Vision shows the mines on the ground. You can shoot them, but once again, the gun on this game is absolutely worthless. So watch this. <laughs> Amazing shooting, Sam. But I've got a good path through this room. You can dodge them without shooting, but I, I like to shoot because I'm a baller. And I, I can hit mines from five yards with about 50 rounds in my pocket. But what I would do then is I would upload during the day. And my internet during the day is, is terrible. But how I compensate for it is I stagger uploads when I sleep. And I upload in bulk. So I might only give you one, one to three videos a day, sometimes a bit more. But there's generally maybe 10 to 20 videos going up when I upload and it's just so I can stagger them and I can always have something available for people so I can keep myself consistent and hopefully grow. That's how it works. However, if I have an opportunity to be first, which is entirely rare on YouTube and not often the case, then I'm going to try my best to do something about that. So I'll try and get something up. The smaller the video, the easier it is to get up and get that initial exposure. Everything after that can be fine. So I might make two short videos to go up through the day so I've got something solid on the channel and then that night I'll upload the bigger ones and have as much as I physically can and I'll work it that way and that's the way to do it. But that aside, it never limits my... My internet is never the reason for videos being X amount of time. It is always choice by me for whatever reason that you may not know but there has been one because there always is one much like this sequence here. This is a very tough room, and it's tough because it works almost nothing like any mechanic with hard. 
If you move too quick, they'll hear you. If you stood out in the open where they are, when it, the light comes on, they'll see you. So you have to do this very risky game of moving as quick as you can, but not quick enough to generate sound when the light is off. And when the light is back on, you need to stand still and be somewhere where they can't see you through the skylights. The reason I had so much trouble here is because I forgot about a mechanic the game taught me earlier on. It is the mechanic of pressing crouch as you come off of a, a wire to land softly and make no noise. If you don't know this, you will never ever do this roof without making sound. Because when you drop down, you trigger an alarm and some people attack you. The way I drop off the, the ropes and drop off things without making sounds is instead of timing it by pressing circle as you land or before you land, I press circle at the exact same time I let go of the rope. So I press triangle and circle at the same time. That way, I never ever miss it. There's never poor timing on my behalf, it's always done that way, and it works every time. So if you're having trouble here dropping down, triangle and circle, same time, Sam will do a, an exaggerated landing, he'll make no sound, and you can move on. I recommend that you save quite frequently here, as much as you dare. I can also confirm I beat all of Pandora tomorrow without having a single instance where the save crashed, so that's pretty awesome. I was really happy about that. However, I did not get a, a deathless run, guys, uh, which is bullshit, but the game auto-saves when you die, so you can't exploit it like that. If you want to get the no-death trophy, you either have to play very safe or back up your save. And uh, I ended up trying to get off a submarine. It was hilarious, because whenever stuff kicks off, I pause it and reload, so I don't have time to die. So it's not that I'm a supreme Splinter Cell player or anything, it's just I don't die, because I, I reload. I was trying to get off a submarine to completely skip a gunfight, and I couldn't remember whether or not if Sam could swim. I should have known Sam cannot swim, and I dropped off, it killed me, and boom, that was it. That was my run failed, and at the end, I didn't die again, so I died once, and I got the trophy for beating the game in under three deaths, but of course I didn't get the deathless one because it auto-saved, which is kind of tragic, but uh, I don't really do trophies, so I'm okay on that regard, and it's just... A suffering of the guide, because then I can't say it's a deathless guide to help people do that. But you can do that trophy on easy, folks. You can take your time, you can have like a backup save where you play the level so you know all the cheeky things that killed you before, and then play it on your real save so you can do it without making any of those mistakes. Uh, it's a really good way of, of doing something like that. Or just keep backing your save up. Pedantic and annoying, but it's very effective. So this room has two guards, the one I'm looking at and the one to the right in the cubicles. The mirrors don't have reflections, because machines weren't that powerful back then. And that shot just there didn't work. It worked on him, it didn't work on the guy in the door. That is kind of rare. I think I did it too close to the right. I think that was my mistake. That shot worked perfectly. This would have never gone this far if my first shot had have been better. But this is to show you that even if it goes wrong, you can still use it to your advantage. So once you're through here, get in this room just as he turns around, or he kind of turns around, and you're all good. The freezer section coming up that reminds me of Predator 2 is, is really tricky, and it's tricky for a couple of reasons. The first one is you're not using shadow to succeed, you're using uh, kind of like smoke, like dry ice. Uh, I don't know the technical term for cold air that swirls, but it's pretty tricky. And then the final room, there is a guy who patrols around who, for some reason, I got different results every time I did the same strategy. One time it worked, another time he saw me. One time it worked, another time he saw me, and it, it kept on being really strange. So I'm going to explain that when it crops up. This coming up here as well, I've done this strategy three times now. Two out of three times it worked. On the third time, for some reason, all my soldiers weren't lined up here. I don't know what happened, I don't know why it happened, but it did. And I need to tell you that just in case you're having issues. The one thing I cannot help you with in any of my walkthroughs is the same thing I will never be able to help you with until it goes away. And that is something called RNG. RNG is a term that a lot of speedrunners use to talk about the random variables in games. Games are inherently random, and that randomness is what makes some of them more challenging than they need to be. If you don't understand what I did then, 
I used a distraction camera, and I gassed the three of them in one spray. A, an insanely effective strategy that can be used as many times as you have cameras, but you've never seen me do it because I've been avoiding using it because it's that good. However, that right there is the perfect strategy for it, and that's why I shared it. So, in this place, light and shadow still matter, but they don't matter as much, because as you can see, it looks kind of ridiculous. Thermals are the most important part of this. Staying as dark as you can, and using thermals. As you can hear, there's a turret in this room, and it's stopping you from going into the next one. But don't worry, there's a really good way of getting past it. The problem is, it's on the other side of some flaps, those kind of butcher door flaps. I don't know the name of those either. I'm not a butcher. But the gun is right there, do you see it? So you need to wait for it to look the other way, and then you need to run in here. And then crouch run so you don't make too much noise and you're quick. Do not dilly dally, or you will be shot without mercy. This next room here, I believe, has two to three guys in it. Definitely a guy on the left, definitely a guy just in front of me here, see his foot. There he is. Two guys in this room, sorry. And then one guy in the next... Oh no, is that a third dude just there? Looks like a third dude. Then again, the thermals aren't doing too well through that... Whatever the hell these machines are. But he's knocked out. Then I'm going to try and grab his buddy. If you have to save him between every knockout, if you're making mistakes and it's taking a while, up your saving. That way it'll save you time in the long run. You know, you can save as often as you want to, or as infrequently as you choose to, and that's the great joy of it. Having the ability to make your own checkpoints can make the game as hard as you want it to be, or can make the game as fun to play as you want it to be. There are a lot of people who think checkpoints make games easier, there are a lot of people who don't. It's entirely up to you. But there he goes. Right, this next room, the turret is just there. And there's one guy who patrols around. I'm going to use this girder that's above us to sneak into the room. However, for some reason, when you wait and you do what I do as I'm trying to wall jump here to get onto it, there you go. I wait for him to put his back up against that machinery in the other room and then I move on the pipe. There we go, and jump onto the pipe. Come on, Sam, do it. There you go. You notice how he's coming to investigate because I was making noise jumping around like an idiot. So he's going to walk away, and I'm going to start moving, so... Do you notice how he's got his back up against that thing, and he's moving around? Every so often, he just sees you, and he starts shooting. It doesn't make a lot of sense. But what you want to do is, as soon as you can get off this thing, get off it. And then go and put yourself in a better position. There you go. Oh, trying to drop, making mistakes. That was the triangle and circle drop, I made no noise, I can come in here and turn off this machine gun. And then we can deal with him. So, at this point, the hard bit is done. You've done the tricky sections of the level. I can't really remember if the abattoir has anything left to offer us as far as challenge, so I'm probably going to talk about the tangent I, I mentioned in Chinatown, which I didn't have chance to talk about. I'm also contemplating here using a ring airfoil round because I don't want to mess this up after to getting in this room. So I climb back on here and I'm going to try and shoot him in the head. But of course, the game is kind of tricky at times when it comes to letting you see things and letting you do things. But we've... Is that going to work? No. Of course it didn't work. Haha. <laughs> Just wasted the, the ring airfoil round. Hopefully I go and pick it up, but I probably don't. And the problem there, I think, is if you try and drop off the top of it onto him, you clip on the girders. So it means that you can't do those standard takedowns. And I tried a few things to get rid of him, and in the end, I just thought I'd shoot him because he was annoying me. And look how effective it was. So, pushing forward, there's another dude. It's tricky to get your bearings when you're looking in the thermal site. Unless you, you, you can see the environment that you were in. Oh, something else to bear in mind here. I'm going to move these bodies into the dark. I got to the end of this section and an alarm sounded, and I think it's because of this guy's body. 
I don't entirely know how this mechanic works, but it works enough for me to tell you that it can be a problem. So if you're getting alarms and you don't know why, go back, hide the bodies better. It seems to work every time. I didn't have any trouble with that on Pandora tomorrow. Um, literally none at all, and I don't know if it works the same in Chaos Theory, but I'm just looking forward to having a much better knockout option. The saddest part, though, about Pandora, uh, about Chaos Theory, sorry, is I'm not going to be able to use the knife, and the knife is the coolest part of that game, because I'm going to be going non-lethal, and unfortunately, he doesn't have a rubber knife, so it's not like I can stab them with a rubber knife to take them out. Because those knife executions are so good. I love them. I absolutely love them. But this is me trying to dump a body in a freezer in the place where it's darkest and that's pretty much as dark as it's going to get. And then we can walk back through. But you're going to see that in the next video. So thank you very much for watching and you take care now.